Hi everyone, this is Jen Grisanti and I am the author of Storyline, Finding Gold in Your Life Story. A large part of my brand is understanding how to fictionalize your emotional truth in the stories that you tell. And with this emotional truth, I have developed some tools and I want to talk with you in this video about these tools. So we are all going through uh, what I would refer to as a wound. Uh, I tell many of my writers with your characters, you want to think what is the wound that is driving your character? And what is the flaw that gets in the way? Uh, so this is the first uh, step toward understanding how to fictionalize your emotional truth. You look at your own story and you mine from the moments that happen. Well, we are in the middle of a monumental moment with the pandemic and with the aftermath of what happened to George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many others uh, with Black Lives Matter uh, and the idea of this movement to create change. And through narratives, we can create change. So what I want you to think about is a way of utilizing this time and thinking about the future stories that you plan on telling. Uh, I have two tools that I work with writers on and one is called the triangle of the wound and the other is an extension of it. So with the triangle of the wound, what I would love for you to think about are the three emotional story points to develop your character from. And the first emotional story point is the childhood wound. With the childhood wound, you wanna think about the, the thing you're thinking about in linking these three moments is how the childhood wound links to a wound that happened right before we enter the story then the inciting incident or series trigger and dilemma splits open these wounds. And developing your character from these three emotional points is what will connect the audience to your story and reveal your emotional truth. Uh, so I will illustrate these within some TV shows and a film further in the video. The second tool I would love for you to think about is the idea of, and this is something that came to me recently, uh, because I've been working in story for over 25 years. I have had the opportunity as a former current programming executive to see my notes made and, and to really see what works and what doesn't work with story. And with this, I have really gotten into analyzing what is working on uh, dreaming, what is working feature-wise, what is working network TV-wise, and why is it working. And that is where this tool came from. I began to recognize that there is a link between the external pursuit and the internal dilemma. And what I and beginning to see is that this link does not necessarily have to be directly connected. So what you want to think about is how does the external pursuit heal the internal dilemma? Uh, this is something that through years and years of studying story, I started to really see 
uh, in some recent shows I've watched uh, with streaming. Now, one of these shows is called The Eddie, and this is on Netflix, and I highly recommend it. And what I began to see in The Eddie was the three emotional story points that the central character was drawing from uh, with the loss of his son, the loss of his marriage, and the estrangement or somewhat estrangement of his relationship with his daughter. Then the external pursuit when his business partner and best friend makes a bad deal because he and his best friend are partners in running a jazz club in France. And the friend makes a deal with the wrong person. And then the friend winds up getting killed. And the external pursuit is cleaning up what happened with the best friend and the choice he made to get involved with these people and saving the dream of the jazz club. So what the external pursuit does in this show is it gives the central character an opportunity to heal the internal dilemma with what happened with the three story points I mentioned with his loss. Uh, so this gives you an example of the tool of Triangle of the Womb, which I will go further into, and the idea of looking at your story and understanding how the external pursuit can heal the internal dilemma. There are two shows that I love on Netflix that give you a strong idea of how to work the triangle of the wound within your concept. And these two shows, uh, one is a comedy, one is a drama, or one could be considered a half hour drama. But uh, one show is Fleabag and the other show is called River. And both shows are on Netflix. So with Fleabag, what I want you to think about with the triangle of the wound. Now in Fleabag, we don't know what the series trigger and dilemma is until the very last scene. And this is a very non-traditional structure. However, what we see in the opening is we see the flaw which is Fleabag's promiscuity. And this stems from the wound of the emotional abandonment of the father. And we see this illustrated when Fleabag goes to visit her father and has to ask for help. It becomes very apparent uh, what the childhood wound is in a single scene. And then the wound that happens before we enter the story is Fleabag went through a tremendous loss with her best friend. And through the six episodes, what we will learn is that Fleabag's flaw with her promiscuity contribute, contributes to that loss. Then the trigger in the story happens when Fleabag gets rejected uh, to get a loan. And with this rejection, it is the idea of the death of the dream because her and her friend who she lost before she enters the story, Boo, made a pact that they will never have to ask anyone for help. And part of the uh, pilot pursuit is Fleabag has to ask for help due to the rejection of the loan. Uh, so this gives you a brief idea of the triangle of the womb with Fleabag. With River, uh, in a similar fashion, River goes through a tremendous loss before we enter the story. And this loss, which we'll quickly learn, which is a twist, 
uh, that happens in the first five to seven minutes. And we learn that before we entered the story, River lost his partner. And he has a very strong emotional reaction to this loss. With the series trigger and dilemma, River goes after a young guy who he believes uh, caused his partner's death or was involved with it. So River goes after him and the young guy winds up falling to his death. So you have those two moments. Then what we learn, because River is an investigator and his boss tells him he has to go through um, counseling uh, through the therapist for the company in order to move forward with his job. And what we learn in those sessions is that when River was younger, his mother dropped him off when he was eight at his grandmother's and he, she didn't pick him up until he was 14. So that wound is emotional abandonment, not unlike what I mentioned in Fleabag. And that, so you have the value of the childhood wound being emotional abandonment. Then the wound that happens before we enter the story and River splits open that wound. Then we see a very large emotional response, which in your series trigger and dilemma leads to the death of a young guy who may or may not have been involved in the death. So this immediately connects us to the pursuit of the central character. This gives you a glimpse of this tool with the triangle for the wound. And because I recognize that we are in a prime time to be thinking about the wound and drawing from it, this is an ex a strong example of how you can utilize this in the stories that you are telling. Now I want to talk to you about Ford versus Ferrari. I want you to think about this film uh, with regard to the second tool I mentioned. And this is how the external pursuit gives an opportunity for the central character to heal the internal dilemma. In Ford versus Ferrari, we learn that the central character, Shelby, uh, had won the Le Mans. He was the only American to win it. We see him in his heyday. Then we see him at the doctor's office and due to an elevated heart rate uh, and a closed valve, the doctor tells him that he can no longer race. So the idea of the dream going up in smoke. Then we get introduced to a uh, Ford company and Henry Ford II and the idea of the dilemma they're facing in that their competitors are outselling them. So Ford wants one of his uh, employees to come up with a grand idea uh, in order to keep their job. So we're looking at that dilemma. We're looking at what Shelby went through. Then we see Shelby with a new driver that he is working with. And we learn that Goodyear no longer is going to be a sponsor for Shelby and this driver, Ken Miles. We learn that Ken Miles has a big temper. Uh, and so Shelby needs to get a new sponsor on board in order for Ken to be able to race and win. And this is a way that is keeping Shelby's dream alive. Uh, we learn that Shelby uh, was, it was quoted that after Shelby retired, which was right after he won the Le Mans, that he lost his nerve. So this gives us an idea of the wound and the pursuit when uh, Ford 
ends up losing the deal through Iacocca with Ferrari, Ford tells them that he wants to build a race car and he wants the best engineer and the best drivers. And this opportunity, which is the external pursuit, gives Shelby a chance to solve the internal dilemma. Uh, so this movie is excellent. I could go so much further into this, but I just wanted to give you a general idea of how to look at two of my newer tools as they apply to story. My main intention is for you to learn through the wound that we are all currently going through, that you can utilize the wound in order to change the narrative and for all of us to move forward from what is going on, we need storytellers like you to utilize the wound to change the narrative so that we can go through a shift and move in a better direction. I wanna thank you so much for joining me uh, and I hope that you are utilizing your emotional truth and adding fiction to it in the stories that you tell. Thank you so much.